Hi, good afternoon, Ani. This is Abul Hassan bin Kalam, and today I'll be presenting on a vulnerable population, namely the LGBTQ community, and I will also uh, discuss about an advocacy campaign that can be targeted towards this community to reduce the health disparity that exists within this community. Uh, so I'll begin by sharing the slides. So the topic of discussion for today is advocating for the LGBTQ community. So I, at first I'd like to begin with a description of what the term LGBTQ means and why it's this community very important. So LGBTQ, or if I convert it into its full form, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and others community is a consortium of groups that are diverse um, in gender identity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, and race or ethnicity. Uh, they reflect the fact that heterosexuality is not an exclusive sexual orientation, a belief that has been, in fact, a social norm for centuries. And because they do not conform to traditional gender roles and expectations, they face considerable uh, stigma, discrimination, violence, all of which actually underlie their various health disparities. After this, uh, I have actually carried out a research into the health condition, the, the overall health condition of the community. And what I have found is really very alarming because according to Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, 32% of the LGBTQ community suffers from mental illnesses such as stress, depression, eating disorders, social disorders, and many more. And also they have the highest rates of suicidality than any other population in Australia, according to Australian Bureau of Statistics 2019. Apart from these, there are some other issues some of the health issues within the community that includes ease of illicit drugs, which is very widespread with drug overdose accounting for 8% of all LGBTQ deaths. Uh, apart from this social ignorance, stereotyping as being deviant makes them really vulnerable to health risk behaviors, which includes alcohol consumption, smoking cigarettes and risky sexual attitudes. Uh, such as sex without condoms, prostitutions, etc. And apart from all these, the biggest concern for this community is high risk of sexually transmitted disease diagnosis, which, uh, which has been reflected in a data by Australian Institute of Health and Welfare that reports that 70% of new HIV diagnoses in 2016 were attributed to them. And apart from all this, they also have low rates of testing and clinical adherence. Uh, now, uh, while investigating the reasons behind this health disparity, I have certainly noticed a gap in health policy that were introduced in the last few years. And certainly these policies lack uh, lack an approach that would reduce the gap of the LGBTQ community than the national average. Uh, so I have actually found three gaps. The first one is a gap in health promotion programs, second gap in data collection, and third gap in healthcare prevention. So discussing about the gap in health promotional programs after searching various academic and reputable sources, I found that most mass media campaigns targeted towards LGBTQ people focuses on individual responsibility for health behaviors. And this approach uh, positions risk factors as correlates to individual behavior alone, uh, which consequentially 
holds affected individuals of the LGBTQ community into account for their health. Uh, this ultimately reduces the trust of the LGBTQ community towards health services, um, for, such as sexual health clinics, for example, resulting in really low rates of sexually transmitted disease testing and treatment adherence. Moreover, LGBTQ health promotional interventions are mostly based on the biomedical model, meaning that the focus is on treatment rather than addressing the social barriers underlying health risk behaviors. And the next one, gap in data collection, which is in fact a very important social determinant of the health disparity that exists within the LGBTQ community. Um, so the research methodology is a very significant factor in the concealment of LGBTQ issues from Australian population health policies. The Department of Health's epidemiological strategy, as I saw, relies solely on aggregated, aggregated individual level survey data, failing to analyze the socioeconomic and social relations um, impact on health. Uh, and these impacts include systematic racism, harassment, stigma, discrimination, etc. For example, these current policies fail to protect sexually diverse communities from landlords who refuse to rent accommodation to LGBTQ people uh, or workplaces, for example, that does not give health insurances to the employed same-sex domestic partners. And, uh, and apart from these, another important factor is that uh, for which the full extent of LGBTQ health disparity is hard to estimate is that the Australian census does not include questions on se uh, sexual orientation at all. It suddenly limits the ability of researchers to understand the health needs of the LGBTQ community and hinders the development of health policies targeted to reduce the health disparities. A third gap which I uh, found after investigating several academic sources is a gap in healthcare provision, which is in fact a very important factor that contributes to poor health outcomes of the LGBTQ community. And um, actually a major gap remains in funding and operation of sexual health clinics. This includes lack of knowledge of staffs to support the needs of culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Uh, substandard care due to lack of staff training and high cost of medications and treatments such as PrEP and syphilis injection. So what's the solution to reduce this policy gap? Uh, I have designed an LGBTQ advocacy campaign based on several academic sources and from what we learned in our lecture. Uh, and this advocacy campaign uh, is anchored in principles of fairness, human rights, equality, intersectionality, and self-advocacy. Um, so at the center of this policy will be the development of constitutional human rights charter to protect the fundamental rights of LGBTQ people. The charter could be modeled according to the 2006 Yogya Karta principles, and uh, for those who does not know, the, the Yoga Karta principle relates sexual orientation and gender identity to the applications of human rights law. And this policy would firstly target non discriminant enjoyment of cultural, uh, economic, and social rights by LGBTQ people, including accommodation, employment, and social security. Secondly, the policy will encourage funding for collection and dissemination of LGBTQ statistics. This will include adding questions about gender identity, sexual orientation, intersex status to the 2026 census conducted by the Australian Bureau of, Bureau of Statistics, which is just five years later. Thirdly, there will be a guideline for increased funding for sexual health clinics, especially gender clinics and transgender centers. With this funding, health professionals should be trained on how to work with LGBTQ people. And the policy will propose an incentivized accreditation system that registers health professionals as being gender knowledge competent.
Now, what are the targets and tactics for this advocacy campaign? So as like all other advocacy campaign, it is important to have a target, targeted uh, group of people, which in this case would be, uh, would be state ministers of the departments of health and social services, um, chief health officer, community and population health policy makers and social justice policy officers. Uh, and the strategies that I will use to, uh, uh, to make this advocacy campaign a success would include four steps. The first being understanding the system as decision makers, like why it is important to understand system as decision maker. Uh, so if I analyze the different stakeholders involved in an LGBTQ policy to help us understand who our allies, opponents, influencers are and how they influence the policy adoption. And it is important to develop strategies to counter any conflicts that arise from opponents. For example, religious leaders often derail LGBTQ equity policies. Presenting evidence-based data and information regarding health disparities and sexually transmitted disease burden can counter the op opposition from this powerful group. Uh, a second strategy that I will use is keep myself and my group informed about current LGBTQ issues. For example, I'll subscribe to the mailing list of local LGBTQ organizations to keep myself informed about state and local events to address policy change. E-newsletters from credible organizations like um, uh, like the National LGBTQI Health Alliance, like Intersex Human Rights Australia and Aiken will keep me updated on opportunities for advocacy and action. A third uh, strategy would be creating alliances, which is in fact a very important strategy for any campaign, um, for any advocacy campaign, because if without the support of different organizations and people, it is imp impossible to make any advocacy campaign a success. And how to create alliances? Uh, this can be achieved by associating with LGBTQ equ equality organizations like 2010 that are involved in LGBTQ advocacy, state and local coalitions like Agenda Agenda, Rainbow Visions, um, and uh, are all uh, you know? You know these organizations are actually committed but to LGBTQ justice and inclusion. These are strong lobby organizations, and they have built strong and trusting relationships with policymakers. They also have previously contributed to LGBTQ mar marriage reform law, for example. And a fourth tactic that I will use is doing media engagement and strategic messaging media. As you all know, it's a very strong communication route to convey a message to target audience as part of an advocacy campaign. Instead of promoting a blame culture, like the message should include social and community changes that the policy will bring. Uh, for example, large number of people can be reached to radio, newspapers, televisions, social networking sites, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, very, very efficient. Um, roots of strategic messaging and media engagement. And media engagement actually helps to build public awareness and support, which can help build pressure on policymakers. Okay. That was actually the end of it. Thanks very much for staying with me and see you later. Bye.